This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Daylight now came streaming through the woods. There was a short lull in the firing, and looking off to the left front I discovered a cavalry force moving to our left. I called the attention of Major Powell to them, and suggested that perhaps they were endeavoring to flank us. He watched them a moment and decided that that was what they were trying to do, whereupon he called his bugler and immediately sounded the retreat. As soon as that movement began, the enemy followed, pouring a galling fire upon us. We were endeavoring to carry off our wounded, and so our progress was slow. We had not retreated far when we met Colonel Moore of the 21st Missouri Infantry with five companies of his regiment. He rated us as cowards for retreating. We warned him not to be too bold or he would get into trouble. It was not twenty-five minutes after that when he was wounded, twice, and his force nearly annihilated or put to rout. Major Powell endeavored to hold back the enemy, but could not stand against them. Our battle lines gave way and the Major himself was killed before we reached camp. With the light of another day, the battle again resumed, and with three fresh divisions of Buell's army which had joined us, and with Lew Wallace's division and the broken organization of Grant's army, the contest was resumed in full fury. Crawling out from under my shelter, I moved down to where I could fill my canteen with dirty Tennessee water and a few hardtacks. I fell in with a portion of our regiment that our Lieutenant Colonel Graves had picked up, and we were marched out again to the battle line. There is one experience I would like to speak of in particular. I came upon three Confederate soldiers, two of them wounded so sorely that they were just breathing their last. One was a beardless boy, not more than fourteen or fifteen years old. He was sitting, leaning up against a tree, and as I approached him he called out in a clear voice, Well, if you are going to kill me, kill me. I asked, Why do you think I want to kill you? He answered, Our folks say that you kill all the prisoners. I replied, Yes. Your people have told you many things. They would make us out savages. But what are you going to do with me? He asked. Why, said I, the ambulances are out picking up all the wounded, and they will come for you, too. Conditions in the army grew worse every day. We were constantly moving, perhaps only a few miles at a time and our supply and baggage trains were often mired so that they could not come up with us for days. Meanwhile, we would be left without shelter, food, or hospital care, and this soon caused nearly all to become sick. Stomach trouble, diarrhea, fever, and chills soon brought a large share of our army to the point where they were in no shape for offensive service against any enemy. No soldier who served in that campaign will ever forget it. Our own regiment, the 12th Michigan Infantry, got so reduced by sickness and death on account of exposure and hardship that General Logan sent us back to the river to recruit. But alas, that was no place to recruit. Six soldiers as we were, scores died and many were sent home. There was no building for a hospital nor physicians to care for us, nor needed medical supplies. I myself was sick for three weeks and became so weak that I despaired of my life and felt I would never see home again. He is watching. But he who cares for all his children must surely have been watching over me, for I recovered, slowly. Many years later I offered up my thanks to him as I knelt on that battlefield on the 54th anniversary of that terrible conflict. <laughs>